You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests, hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, I am your host, Danny Mussolini, and I just want to welcome you guys to another awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. We have a very special guest for uh, today's interview. Of course, as you guys know that, and there are over 24,000 of you guys in our chat room, uh, on the browser, Google Hangout, Skype, on the phone line. So I just want to say what's up, what's happening, what's cracking, and what it do. All right. <laughs> so today is special. Oh, yeah. When it is over, it will be gone forever. You only have one chance to make today a productive, important one. Each moment is a golden opportunity for you. Each moment is a chance for you to learn, to grow, to create value, to produce wealth, to make a positive difference in your own life and the lives of other people. What you do today can improve all your tomorrows. What you do today can change the world. Today is the key, folks. If not today, then when? What have you always wanted? What have you always dreamed of being, doing, or having? Today is your opportunity to go forward. Today is your day to take the first step to take positive actions, to take control of your life and your future. Today is only here once. Use it while you have it. Make it count. Make it special as only you can do. Take that from me, Denny Mussolini. That is my word. And word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Today's interview is the Caesar interview, and I'm your host, Dino Mussolini. Just in case you guys have forgotten that quick, ah, just got to do it, you know. So we are the people who have dedicated their weekdays and nights to music, films, news, business ventures, conspiracies, books, uh, and just talk in general. For my incredible writing and promotion on our Facebook page. Uh, by the way, if you're on Facebook right now, which I know a lot of you guys are, go ahead and scroll over to the uh, Vigilantes radio page and make sure you slap the like button. And then we have our interview and music show, which is what you're listening to now, Vigilantes Radio, or the dive deep into relationships, music business, spiritual living on a show that I have called Skeptics. We spend each and every day giving our maximum effort to create a vibrant, exciting, independent community for all creative minds that coexist in this beautiful artistic world. So with that, let's go ahead and invite our special guest, Caesar. You're now live in a mix with all of us. How is it going? All 
All right, let's try that now. Caesar, are you with us? What's good? All right, all right. There we go. There we go. You can hear me? Hey, man, how are you feeling, man? How are you feeling? Good, good. I'm good. How you doing? Doing great, doing great. So, man, I, I like the look that you got, man. You got the uh, the suit. Is is that like a uh, – is that how you dress normally? Let me ask you that. Yeah, that's how, yeah, that's how I dress. That's just my normal dress. May man, just like me. I, I dress the same way, my brother. <laughs> you you got to stay fresh, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah All I right, like man. Suits. So right off the – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you did. I just said I like suits. Definitely. All right, man. Uh, right off the bat and diving deep. So looking back and listening to, like, previous hip-hop and rap records in history – in, conspar- in comparison to today's music, do you feel the songs some artists make hold up today as strongly as they did back when the styles were first introduced to us? Uh, I'd say yes and no. Yeah. I'd say yes. There. I, th- I think there are some artists that make, you know, good music and, you know, with messages and, you know, meaningful. But then i also say that there's a lot of shit that's just, like, baloney. Mm-hmm. So I think it goes both ways. I, like all the old hats, I think still hold it down. The guys have been doing it for you know fifteen, twenty years plus. I think they're still mm-hmm. holding it down. I think there's a lot. I think there are some new artists that you know had good messages and you know are really saying something. But I also think that the game right now is saturated with a lot of that just, you know baloney music. Oh yeah, I agree, man. I definitely agree. Yeah. To me, well, I mean, like, I'm not knocking. No, 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 not knocking it. But like, take singles from like let's let's think about Bone Thugs and Harmony first of the month. That's a song yeah, that comes on all the time on the first of the month, yeah. or uh, something Crossroads. by Tupac or Biggie. Crossroads. Yeah. Those are songs that you just remember instantly. Now. Yeah. I don't want to say an artist's name, but they may come out with a single is hot for three months, and then you forget about it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're lacking, like, a, there's no real messages, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they just, like, got a, they got a hot beat, you know, a dope chorus, and that's it. And then, I mean, like, the verses are just, they're saying whatever. All right. I, I feel like agree. a lot of the, the lyrical contents kind of went down a lot. Oh, yeah. I think, oh, yeah. you know? I think it's more about just getting a hot beat, making a hot chorus, and then, you know, that's it. Yep. But but there's still people, I mean, like Kendrick Lamar, he, you know, that boy he's spitting. You know, J. Cole spits. You know, M still mm-hmm. spits. So, I mean, Jada still spits. Styles still spits. So there's still artists that, you know, are still spitting, but it's just, it's both ways, you know. Music's yep. changed a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Changed a whole lot. Man, in in your opinion, what's the key element in great songwriting that leads to a song or albums truly lasting throughout the years? It's got to be real. It's got to be real. It's got to be the truth. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the soul. Like, you know, you got to dig deep. And, you know, because people relate. People relate to the truth. You know, if Mm -hmm. if you put out a song, you know, and you're telling a story or something that happened to you or something that you know witness, or that you witness happen, and it comes from a place that's real, like other people can relate to it. You know that's why people love Pac to this day after all these years because Pac's music was so real and raw. Like you know, some might hate it, some might love it, but like he told you, he spoke from the soul. Mm-hmm. And I think, and you know, same with Biggie, you know, Nas. Like that's that's why their music still lives on to this day. Yep. Is, is that what you keep in mind when you're writing your music? Yes, yes, it's like my main thing. I won't, I can't put anything out if I don't believe it. Like I, I yeah. won't just put out. Like I was told when I first started making music, you know, I was still learning like who I was as an artist, what kind, of, what I wanted to talk about, you know. And I remember the first producer, I don't remember his name, but he was just trying to get me. He's like, no man, just make a hot chorus and just, you know, put out this song. And I couldn't do it, mm-hmm. so like we didn't, we we clashed, and you know I couldn't work with him, because like I, I mm-hmm. couldn't, I couldn't lower myself just to do that. Like I was like, no man, I, if I'm gonna put something out, it's gotta be something that I really believe in, I really feel, 
Like, you know, it's got to be the truth or I can't do it. Yeah. You know, I think that's... People got to listen to music and be able to, like, relate to it. Yeah. You know, like, that's, that's, I mean, that's what I think. Oh, yeah. I got to agree. I have to agree. Man, Caesar, as far as, like, the rest of this year go, I know we're just kind of, like, stepping into the summer. Um, you know, we still have a few months to go with, you know, summer and fall and winter. Um, what are your future plans for the rest of this year? I got. I already got a single I released June 1st. I want to close with the Familia featuring uh, Payroll Giovanni and S.A. Cali and Marta Al, produced by Halliva. I got my second single about to come out, Rain Dance, also produced by Halliva. And then uh, my debut album's coming out in August, August 7th. Top of it with the Agape. So right now mm. I'm just, you know, getting ready to get that out there, you know. And then, you know, I'm always constantly in the studio making new music, you know, because you can't stop. But yeah, right now, right now I'm mainly focused on my album, my next thing on my album. Nice. And, and then, your and title then I, of the album sounds very Italian. It is. It means "boss of all bosses" in Italian. Capo de tutti i capi. Oh, bosses of all yeah. bosses. Yeah. It's, I yeah, thought a capo I'm, was like second in, in command. Capo, capo, it can be used many ways. Capo could be like a okay. captain. Capo, capo could mean his boss, you know. But then when you put it with other words, like you know, capo de tutti i capi, it's saying boss of all bosses. Okay, nice. So yeah, yeah, people, nice. people confuse that. Yeah, because I mean, technically, like the top guy is the don, you know, and then mm-hmm. under the don you got you know under boss and the capos and the soldiers, but. Yeah, but it depends how you use it. Because Capo could, Capo's a boss. Capo could be a captain. Yeah. Nice. All right. So, um, are you looking to break through to mainstream? Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I just, I just love making music. It's my release. I make music. I try to make the best music I can. I put it out there, and then, like, I leave the rest up to God. Whatever happens is going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, what I'd like to be super huge, I mean, I don't really look at stuff like that. You know, like, yeah. I, didn't get to, I didn't get into music to become famous, you know? I didn't, I didn't make music to, you know, fame or any of that. I made music because it's just something that always connected with me. You know, if I was stressed mm-hmm. out or sad or happy or mad or pissed off or whatever... You go write a song, or you go you go record like it's a release. You know, you're making a beat. Listen to that beat, Bob, and that beat. Like you know, it just it's like relaxing. You know, some people drink, some people smoke, some people you know run. Like for me, I like music. Music's my way to vent. Definitely. Okay. Now going back to your debut album, debut man. Are you putting any pressure on yourself? Uh. Like, when I first started it, I was just doing it because I had all these songs, and I was like, man, let's just put an album out, you know? So, mm-hmm. and then, and then you know, I thought I already had the songs, and then I, I was like, no, I'm going to record some more. You know, it's like music. Music is crazy. Like, so I went to the studio, started recording more songs, and then, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to do this one. And then, like, I got an idea how I'm going to do an album. It all started coming together. And, Yeah. Okay. So Caesar, how would you define success? Like I know success can come with many definitions, depends on the individual. What would that be for you pertaining to your music career? Success to me. Uh if I can get enough people to just hear the truth. Mm-hmm. At least my or let me let me rephrase that. If I get enough people to hear my truth. Mm. Like, because there's a lot of, like, I'm I'm 100% Italian. I spoke Italian mm-hmm. if I spoke English. I've been to Italy 25 times. I'm about to go back to Italy in a week. You know, I got family all over Italy. And, you know, music, you know, especially like rap music, hip-hop, gangster rap, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people talk all this gangster shit, you know, or they talk about, you know, the mafia and the mob and all that. But a lot of them really don't know what they're talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of them are just, like, 
they'll take a you know a guy's name and drop it or they'll like you know portray the image but they're not like they don't really understand like how serious that is <laughs> and like how like it's like there's good parts to it and then there's really bad parts to it so like in my album like I'm kind of telling them to get in the bed of it I'm telling the truth of yeah. how that life really is you know and so that's, that's what your album's about yeah the truth yeah yeah. So are you from the, mob, the mafia? Yes. There's no such thing as the mafia. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the mob? <laughs> it's, it's, it's still no such thing, bro. Okay. Okay, <laughs> you okay, Caesar. I got you, yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay. So, all right, so you're from Italy originally. Yes. How did you end up in Michigan? My parents. Parents, okay. My my parents. Well, I was born in the states. Oh, okay, okay. I was born. I was born in Italy. Both my parents were born in Italy. Like three quarters of my family is born in Italy. My parents, mm-hmm. when they they moved to Jersey, then New York, and then Detroit. But you know, like being like from total like you know vulgar parents. Like, I was raised Italian before I spoke English. I actually had to go learn English, you know. Wow. I've been to Italy. I've been to Italy, I think, 25 times. It's like I'm about to go in a week and it'll be my 26th time there, you know. Like, I'm strong, rooted, old-school Italian. Like, yeah. everything from the values to the loyalty to the respect to honor, like, that's my whole life. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So that's that's the truth that we're getting on, on this debut album. Like the yes. stuff you've been around, the stuff you've seen, and uh, your yes. culture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Okay. So let's have some more details about the debut album. Like how many records are you putting on? Are there going to be any guest features, guest producers? It's 16 tracks. And I got Young Bucks on there, uh, Bizarre Whoa. from D12 is on there, Whoa. Payroll Giovanni, Cash, you know, from uh, okay. Good Boys Cash Out, he's on there. I got this uh, Mexican rapper, S.A. Cali Immortal, you know, he's on there, he's dope, he spits, he's kind of, he kind of reminds me, I always used to call him uh, the Mexican bone, because like the uh, way he harmonizes, his, he harmonizes his flow so sick, and he can spit half a talent, or half a Spanish, half English. So yeah, What's he's that dope. Uh, S A Calle Immortal. Ah, good. It's, it's from Jalisco. Which, nice. if you know anything about Jalisco, I mean, it's pretty gangster over there too. Oh yeah. But um, uh, Spit Vicious, Spit Vicious on my album. However, however, produced uh, I think six, seven joints on the album. Um, my cousin Angelo's on the album. He's the one that sings a lot on my album. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anybody. Uh, I think. Oh, let me check real quick. I got that album right in front of me. Where's that? Oh, Keola from Atlanta. I got a joint with her. She sings. She's a dope R&B singer. And I think. Uh, oh, and then Royal House. They produce. Uh, a few tracks from my album as well. Nice. Is it a label release or independent? Oh, it's independent. I got my own label. Nice. Is that going to produce by Caesar, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So and I produced a couple track. And I produced a couple tracks on the album too. Oh, you producer as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I dabble. I want. I'm. I'm okay. still. I'm still. You know. Still trying to. Gotcha. I, w- I wouldn't say I'm messing with any of the really good producers yet. <laughs> I'm not on their level. But, I mean, I can I hold my own a little bit. Okay. But it's always something. It's always something. Oh, yeah. So, when it comes to, like, difficult decisions on which song should make a project or not, like, who do you trust with input on that? And what makes them part of that inner circle of support? Halva. However, he helps me. I, I respect his opinion. He tells the truth. 
he's so real and raw, like, he's not going to bullshit you. If something's whack, he's going to tell you. If something doesn't fit, you know, like the make of the album, he's going to let you know. I trust him. I trust science. Science, uh, he mixes my music. Uh, my brother, my younger brother, ask him, because he's going to be honest with me, too. And then uh, PR, shout out Starlight, PR, you know, I send them songs, ask them what they think. Yeah, and then uh, and then like for, and then like random people, like I like to you know like to do the album or like I record a song, you know I'll drive around listen to it and then I'll just like you know just be places and then I'll just like play it, but I won't tell anybody it's me you know and I'll just let them listen to it and tell them hey what do you think about this or you know you film this or yeah and then just you know yeah yeah. So fans are quick to think of buying merchandise, passing out flyers, attending shows as being the best way they can support an artist. But what are some other ways that supporters can show their true loyalty for Caesar, in your opinion? But these days, I feel like uh, streaming is getting real big, or it is real big. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if they stream your song, tell your friend, tell their friends about your song, or you know about your music, or hey, check out this guy, you know. Social media, you know, you can just retweet, retweet like a, you know, an album or retweet a single or retweet like, you know, a blog or, you know, an interview. It's like, you know, word of mouth. I think that's the best way, like when you're first starting, word of mouth. Yeah, you know, because, you know, it's like, it's like when I first started listening to music, or no, not when I first started, when I first got really, really into rap, you know, it's like, okay, easy. I heard Easy. I heard Easy because my older brother was listening to Easy, and we were playing basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, we were playing basketball outside, and then you know he put it on the boombox, and then I hear it, and I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Who's that? And he's easy. So there, I heard it right. So now I heard him. Older brother's a couple years older than me. So now you know, I'm hanging out with my friends like a week later. You know, we're just doing whatever little kids do, and boom, I start playing it for them. Now they heard it, so they like it. So then now that you know, see how it keeps going and going and going. All right. Okay. So I take it that you're a, a Bone Thugs and Harmony fan. Oh yes. Yeah, actually my single uh my next single about to come out about the album, Rain Dance, it's like my thank you to the like, you know, a lot of the artists that inspired me. You know? Mm-hmm. Or that I loved your music and uh yeah, Bones on there. I talk about Bone in the second verse. Yeah, you, you title dropped their uh their song Days of Our Lives. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I actually, I want to say it was 2010 or 2011, I got to open up for them in Detroit. Nice. But I, I don't. Want, but I want to say someone was missing. They weren't all there. I think one was missing. Maybe. But yeah. So yeah. That's so usually the enough. case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I was lucky enough to, you know, I was blessed enough to meet them. Nice. But yeah, yeah, um, they're on that song. Interesting thing. So I worked for Busy Bone. Yeah, I seen that. I was reading that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And Busy Bone has a crew called the Seven Sign Regime that he kind of formulated, like by rankings of an Italian mob. Oh, really? So we had like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had like Busy, the Don. Uh, we had Hitler, Capo which is now deceased. And then we had, like, the underboss, Q Loco. That's awesome. So I, I thought that was, you know, and he's part Italian. So. Oh, really? Busy is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn, I didn't he's, know that. He's half black, half Italian. That makes sense. Cause he, yeah, because yeah, cause he's kind of light-skinned. Oh, that makes yep. sense. He's dope, man. They're all dope. The, the way oh, those yeah. boys spit. The way they spit and harmonize, it's, I mean, you're never going to, no group's ever going to do what they did. No, never. No way. (laughs) The way they did it, I mean, and I think they're only one of, if not only the only group that they both got songs, they did songs with both Dickie and Pac. Yep. Yep. While they were were alive, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, because I mean, anybody can do it now. But, yeah. No, yeah, they're dope. I love Bone. I still love Bone. I still listen to this stuff to this day. Yeah. The music, I mean, there is. And they're like, you know, they're neighbors. I'm from Detroit. They're right next door in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 
So, Caesar, man, when you're songwriting, how easily do you find your emotions translate into your music? Uh, well, with me, I got like a process how I do it. I, I make music mm-hmm. two ways. Either one, you know, like I'll go to like, you know, a couple of producers that I messed with. I have them play me tracks and then whatever track, you know, stands out to me, I'll grab it. Like the song Rain Dance, I wrote that song in seven minutes. You know, I actually, yeah, and most of it was just like kind of off the top of the head. I heard the beat, and as soon as I heard the beat, I was like, okay, the chorus started coming. So I just started spitting the chorus, and then once I had the chorus, I got the first bar. This is for Dre, and then boom, like it just mm-hmm. flowed. It just came. And then other times, I sit down and just write. You know, like something, I'll either, you know, I'm about to tell a story about this. Or I'm mad today because of this, so I'm going to write this, you know. Or like, you know, ooh, I'm at this girl, she's hot. I like her, so I'm going to write a little song, you know, here. So, you know, I'll start writing it, and then, you know, I find the music to fit it. So with me, it's either if I write it without the music, like without the track yet, then, yeah, it's always going to be exactly how I feel. So the emotions just, they come out. Because, like, that's how I'm venting. Instead of talking to someone, like, oh, you know, people got problems or whatever, they're mad, or sad, sad, like, I don't, I'm private. I'm really talking to people. I don't know how I feel. I just rather just go put it down for me. And that's how I really feel. You know, and then when you hear the beat, you know, if I go that way, you hear the beat, and then it's like I said, usually my songs just write themselves once I hear the beat. Once that right beat mm-hmm. comes, yeah. it's just like, you know, like it just comes out of you. That's why, like, me and Halliver, like, ever since I hooked up with Halliver, man, that boy is nasty. I'm telling you. Mm. That boy is nasty. He's nasty with that beat. And I mean versatile. Whatever you want, he can do it. He ain't just hip-hop. He ain't just rap. He can do rock. That boy's just nasty. Like, you, and let, until you get in the studio, sit down with him, and just see, watch him do what he does, like, that boy is nasty. Every time. Wow. Every, it, it blows <laughs> my mind. He made, he's made me seven bangers, and I think the longest one took him 15 minutes. Like, wow. he, it is, he just pops them out. And they're, and they're perfect every time. Yeah, it's, wow. it's a pleasure to work with him. Watching him work is just, is awesome. It's it's, yeah. it's like you know you're looking at his greatness. Wow. Are there things yeah. that you won't talk about on the record? Uh, I well, if you like when you listen to my music, I'll be telling you something, but I'll do it in a way that I'm not going to incriminate myself or anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I'll I'll paint the picture as best I can without, you know, the the details. Does that make sense? Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like this happened. This is how it kind of happened. But you don't know when or where or how. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because I mean I'm like I know a lot of stuff that you know I'm gonna die with. So. Right. And I'm big, and I'm I'm big on the, you know, I wasn't there and I don't know who was there. So why are you asking me? Mm-hmm. And if you ask me, and, and when people do ask me, my answer is always going to be the sky is blue. So <laughs> I don't really care what you ask me. I'll be like the sky is blue. You know, like last time I got in trouble a few years ago, I sat down and you know they just put me in this room for like ten hours and they asked me wow. the same question ten thousand different ways, man. And that's, you know, because they just got to wait for you to either break or get nervous or whatever. And I just kept telling them the sky is blue to the point where they're getting so pissed off. But I was like, bro, the sky is blue. Like, leave me alone. You know? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a different world today. But like the way I was raised and the way I grew up, like, I still have that old school, like, blood in me. So, which I, yeah. which I consider, a, which I consider a blessing. Because man, to me, that's the only way to survive, man. To me, yeah. people well, dry snitch on yeah. themselves and yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, especially with social media, like yeah, I'm like, dude, like bro, like, like they don't know, like do they not know, like the fact, man, they can find your location in a second. Like you gotta be so like, if you're doing anything right. you shouldn't be doing, if you're doing anything, like let me give advice to people out there listening. If you're doing anything you know you shouldn't be doing, I'm not saying don't do it. Do what you gotta do to survive. Do what you gotta do to eat. But don't put it anywhere on the internet. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, they got, they got uh, 
burner accounts and they got all oh, there's people there's like jobs there's dudes jobs that sit in the room and they just watch you they're watching everything because they're looking for you know you got like the terrorist stuff that's happening right so mm-hmm. they got dudes they're just, they're looking for code words or they're just looking for certain words or just you know like there's alert even through text messages like you text certain words through a text like that sends an alert that sends an alert to the feds that sends an alert to the FBI like you know the look and then the look like oh no it's just two kids just talking shit to each other you know or it's like oh these you know yeah. So the world, the world's nuts, man. Right now, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So it is. Yes, yeah, you, you gotta be, you know, you gotta be super smart. Yeah, and I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. Guys try to snitch on themselves or get themselves in trouble, and it's always just stupid. It, the, the young kids are. It makes it, it's like it's funny talking about music. So I feel like I grew up with all the guys talking about how you know they hustle, but they're hustling to get a better life and then get out, right? Like they were, they were, mm-hmm. they got in the game. They got in the game to get something to get out, right? Because they wanted a better life, right. and like you know, right. just their the, their background and what they came up from was so you know they didn't really have any choices, so that was their choice. And then it's like these days, I feel it's like all the kids they sold to or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. there's so many, there's so many kids that are just like, like you know, like I said, I'm not trying to knock anybody. I'm not gonna down anybody's hustle. You know, do what you gotta do. But like, there's so much drug music, and it's like these kids. It's, like, you buying the drugs those guys are selling or something? I just don't get it. Like, before, you know, they rapped about selling selling to get out the game, you know, to get a better mm-hmm. life. And these and these dudes are talking about, you know, let's go get, you know, high shit. Mm-hmm. And, the, and then, like, you yeah. know, and then, like, you got the kids growing up listening to them. So it's just like, I mean, it's not going to be a good cycle, man. I'm yeah, kind of scared. There's more you know. usage than selling also nowadays. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, it's like they, there's the, they don't have a, a purpose, like, of why, yeah. you know, like, before, you know, like, before, like, I'm not condoning to sell drugs or anything like that, but, you know, sometimes in certain situations, you got no choice. People got to do what they got to do, you know, just, yeah. you got to survive. So, but it's like, those guys weren't just doing it because, oh, hey, I want to go be a drug dealer, <laughs> you know? It's not like, oh, I just want to go be a drug dealer, or I just want to go, you know, I just want to go be, like, Scarface. Like, nah, oh, man, those guys were like, they, they always had a plan. <laughs> You know, like, okay, they did this, and then it's like they're going to do that. And then some of them, you know, take all legit. You know, some will get like, you know, they're going to start building houses. Or some of them, you know, I'm going to go open a record label. Or, you know, I'm going to go get a car dealership. Or I'm going to go do car rentals. You know, like, there was a, mm-hmm. always something else after it, you know. Now, these kids these days, they're starting with just, you know, getting all messed up. So it's like, okay, you're getting all messed up. So it's like you're making money just to get messed up. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, eventually, eventually it's going to run out. And eventually what happens is you end up with, like, a really bad crowd, you know, because the dude's just getting all, mm-hmm. and nothing good comes out of that. Trust me, nothing good is going to come out of that <laughs> at all. Oh, yeah. These are going to rob you. These are going to rob you. These are going to catch you sleeping, you know. Yeah, or you're going to end up in jail, or you're going to, you know, OD and die. Like, mm-hmm. what was this? Did some rappers this year just pass away from OD? Was it Lil Peep or something like that? Yep, yep. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's like one of the new age ones, you know. I mean, but then they, I mean, yeah. So, like I said, it's a different world. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know. All right, man. I just wanted to say one thing before we cut to your music. Uh, it's also easy to catch an accessory charge. Oh yeah. Super. Yeah. Guilty. There's the guilty there's by one of those things around like free candy. Yeah. yeah. Guilty by association. You know, you're right. You could literally be innocent, but you're just in the crowd. You're in the crew with those guys. You know, you go to the club and everybody's strapped. You're not strapped, but you're with them. Yep. Yeah, crazy, no, you're, crazy, you're crazy. 100%. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. You gotta be super smart these days. Yep. And you gotta watch oh, everybody. My... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then you gotta be paranoid oh, because it's like. You got did they tweet it? Did they Instagram live it? Did they Instagram story it? Did they Facebook live it? Did they snap it? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Are their location feature on? All yeah, exactly. Like you see when <laughs> Yeah, man, that's like yeah, I don't like it. Like yeah, I'm big on that. Like what picture is taken. Like I don't, I don't mind getting pictures taken if I know you, but if I don't know you and someone's trying to take a picture, I'll be like, Wait, hold up, why? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it, you kind of developed a little bit of paranoia sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it's not, I wouldn't even really call it paranoia. I think it's more just like watching my own back. 
what oh, you yeah. got to do. Because, I mean, your best friend will do you dirty. Mm-hmm. It's it's sad, but, I mean, that, it's sad, but that's, it happens these days. I do. They remain for themselves sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But loyalty's like at an all-time low. She is. Which is, it, it breaks my heart, you know? Oh, yeah. Because, it's like, that. that's, like, like, like loyalty's the main, like, so big to me in life. You know, like, it's, Loyal friends, loyal family, loyal everything, man. Like, loyal, like, that's just because that's how it is. Because there's nothing that you can't work past. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Unless they unless they cross three lines. Like, there's three lines you should never do. Like, don't, you know, bang your boy's girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't do that. Don't, you know, you don't mess with your family. Mm-hmm. You don't do that. You know, and then, you know, don't, don't, don't help cross them. There's nothing, you know, like, but this, every, these days, it's all quick. Everybody wants quick fix. Yep. It's like, they, they all want it now, and they don't want to work for it. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, different hey, world, man. Now. You're dropping jewels. Are, are these the same jewels you put in your music? Uh, yeah. I mean, different, mm-hmm. it's a different way in the music, but yeah. Different, okay. Man, let's get those websites from you. Um, where do you want people to find and connect with you online? Uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me at Caesar Capo, the number 10, C-E-S-A-R-E-C-A-P-O, and then, you know, one zero. Twitter is the same, you know, Caesar Capo 10. Uh, Instagram is Caesar underscore the number 10. Uh, Snapchat is Caesar underscore Capo. And website is CaesarCapo.com. Nice. All right, guys, after the music break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the hot seat, and our fans love this part of the segment, of course, along with the actual interview. But the audience, the listeners, will get to hear Caesar. uh, Maybe he can sing. Maybe he does poetry, inspirational speech. Maybe he'll freestyle rap for us, tell us a joke or a story, or even play a live instrument. You never know what these creative minds and vessels were produced in the spotlight, and today... We'll find out if Caesar has what it takes to be put on the spot, a test of his true artistry, and maybe even some hidden talents. But for right now, we have Caesar with his unreleased single, Rain Dance. We'll be right back. This one right here. This one here is for the legend. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. This is for Dre who perfected. For Easy E, show me how to be a real G. This is for Ice T, who just didn't give a fuck. And for Snoop, told the world to smoke it up. From the east to the west, this is for the very best. The realest one, Pac and Biggie taught me the ultimate test. Only the illest poets will spit until they death. Willing to say what they really meant, even if it meant taking your last breath. From Nas, he taught me to look out for my peeps. To Styles P who showed me being a gangster and a gentleman You only got brothers and you got no friends To Eminem who open the doors for me to try to step on in I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain man, watch me do my rain dance. This for Russell Simmons, the diner of the game. For DMX who told us to have no shame. For Master P for showing me you need to be a G to survive in this game. A Q today was a good day. See, I told me just to live my life. Bone told me these are the days of our lives. 
Jay gave me the blueprint. I'm reading. Like you goes, tell those elbows, they go. This one for y'all. Cop. Most of all, this for rap, and it's a rap. Now watch me. Salute. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. I'ma do my rain, man. Watch me do my rain dance. All right, and we are back. That was Caesar with the song Rain Dance. That beat was hard, and I like the ode to all of our hip-hop pioneers. Yeah, I, I totally dig that. I know I talked about today. Let's talk about tomorrow. So what will tomorrow be like for you? That is a very good question to ask yourself. But the answer depends primarily on what you do today. Tomorrow will be like whatever you plan and work for it to be. The same goes for next week, next month, next year, and so on. If you don't really have a plan, then tomorrow will be left to chance. You will drift along with whatever comes by. There's nothing wrong with that. If you like drifting, but if you want more direction, if you have something you'd like to do or be or have tomorrow, then you need to start planning and working for it today. Here's something to remember. The further ahead you plan, the more control you have. Take, for example, flying on a commercial airline. If you show up at the airport with no ticket 30 minutes before the flight is leaving, you'll be lucky lucky just to get a seat, and you'll pay the airline's highest fare. If you have ever planned your trip three months in advance, you get to you get your choice of seat. You get there about two hour two hours early before check in. Um, you can often choose which seat you want, plus the in flight meal. You know, and you'll probably get a substantial discount on the fare. So why do airlines reward you for planning ahead? Because it enables them to plan ahead and to allocate their resources in the most efficient and effective manner. Why should you plan ahead in all areas of your life? Same reason, so you can make the very most of what you have. Think ahead, guys, what will be happening in three months, six months, two years. You'll have to deal with the details eventually, so why not start dealing with them now? Planning ahead always gives you more options, plus you'll get more for the money or effort involved. What can you do today to make tomorrow go more smoothly? What can you do today to make next week more productive? How can you act today to make your life better one month from now or six months from now or five years? Think about it and get started today right now on a better tomorrow. Take that from me, Danny Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bond. But for right now, let's bring back the man of the moment, Caesar. You're back live with us and in our hot seat. What are you going to do for us today? Uh, am I allowed to curse? Oh, yeah. All right, I'll spit something for you. All right. Let me just eat. Ready whenever? Ready whenever. In questo giorno la gente parla molto, fammi un favore, sta zitto, non parlare, rispetto alla coche, grazie. He ain't in the sticks, he ain't in the bricks, he ain't chalmers and his girls whip, only shit he stunt with, only holding the eight for some other kids. He ain't strapped, boy, he holding a plastic toy, his old block's soft, if the air's off, I spit lines that rhyme to have him crying while his voice stays rewinding. Wanna hurt, get him butt hurt, with his pretty braids and his black skirt, dressed like one of these new gays, problem child, what's the problem now? That he's been stuck on the block for a while now, we ship, hope your video hits, but with strap. Rap shit, you steal my bitch, always will, kid, I'm your daddy and your grandpappy, it's too easy, how I slap snappy, break the hand that would feed ya, I won't beat ya, I'll just eat ya, my little children are suffering from amnesia, take lessons from your highness, baby, I'm the highest, yep, just the finest, break this shit, but someone like Someone might actually buy your shit. Consider it a gift. I've been done did this shit with no radio promo. Videos are riding dicks like you homos. Hit the block with Glock. I thought it don't pop. Steal and die. True words from a wise guy. So what we'll makes you think I care when your mama cries? In order to restore order if you get slaughtered. When you so dope, I'll make that dope man choke. Damn, Lord. 
All right. Oh, oh, oh. He's uh, giving it to him raw. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Man, let them know those links one more time. My website, CaesarCapo.com. Facebook, Caesar Capo, the number 10. Twitter, Caesar Capo, the number 10. Instagram, Caesar underscore 10. SoundCloud, Caesar 1. And I'll Snapchat, Caesar underscore Capo. Nice. What kind of things are you doing on Snapchat? I don't really be on Snapchat that much. Like, okay. You know, well, I'm about to go to Italy, so I'll probably be snapping a lot in Italy. You know, showing people so I'm about to go all over Italy. You know, it's like when I'm in Mexico, I'll, I'll Snapchat when I'm in Mexico. But, like, daily, I don't really, you know, I'll snap, like, maybe a single, a song, you know, video, my album. But, yeah, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not big with video, like, you know, footage stuff. Like, yeah, gotcha. I, like, like I, I like to stay low-key, man. Huh? You know? I got you. Like, yeah, like the stars used to do back in the day. Like, now that, you know, yeah. most of them are all on all kind of videos yeah. and stuff. But back in the day, man, the more mysterious a person was, like, the better their fan base was. I don't know. Something like that. I just, I just, don't, like, I just don't like the videos, man. Like, I don't like, yeah. you know, unless it's, like, 100% I can, you know, post something and it's, it's I got nothing to worry about, yeah. But, yeah. You know? Like I said, always watch your back. Oh, yeah. 24-7. Right, just 24-7. And, guys, just in case you didn't get those links, we have them in the description of this episode. Um, yeah, of this episode. So all you have to do is click the links. I typed everything out nice and neat. All you got to do is click the link, and it'll take you right to all of those um, websites, social medias that he uh, mentioned. All right, my brother Caesar, I definitely appreciate you for your time and your music and uh, coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, brother. Appreciate it. Nice okay. chopping up with you. No doubt, man. Don't be a stranger. Peace. Peace.